It is to cover their own heart and their own evil. Notice, look at verse 12. Cain, the wicked one, who is displaying the characteristics of who? S period, A period, Tan, murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because he offered Galilee accepted him, right? Right? Wrong. Because his own life was evil. So when we hate or murder another brother and sister, it's to cover the evil and the behaviors in our heart, in our life. Why did, why did Cain murder Abel? There it is. Because Cain's works were evil. Why do brothers hate brothers? Why do brothers slander brothers? It's to cover their own heart and their own evil. They should learn to hide where? In his righteousness. If, we, if they, the murderers who slander and bear false witness and lie and sow discord among brethren, which Yahweh hates. Don't think anybody that divides congregations and causes a, a, a split. A, a, so to, no one's going to escape Yahweh's judgment. Trust me. Read, listen to this. Instead of murdering and slandering and causing division, they should humble themselves and hide themselves in his righteousness. If they hide in his righteousness, they won't have time to hate others as they are too busy receiving his love. When you're in his presence, you know what you're busy doing? Receiving his love and his forgiveness and his mercy. You don't have time to go around hating other people, gossiping about other people, sowing discord among brothers, sowing division, rumors, slander. You don't have time for that nonsense because the person who abides in him is busy receiving his love. It's all about love. Baruch Hashem Yahweh! That's the solution to congregational split. That's the solution. There could never be anybody that leaves any congregation on bad terms if everybody would just abide in his righteousness. I don't have time to, to see what he's doing. I don't have time to see what she's doing. I'm too busy trying to get sin to drop out of my life by remaining in him. I got my hands full. I have a full-time job working and, sh and learning how to watch less baseball and more Yeshua ball. That's a, that's a full-time task. I don't have time. I'm not receiving all of his love right now because I'm not abiding in him all the time. So if, but if I'm receiving his love all the time, I don't have time to talk about Marsha's car. Ooh, did you see Marsha's car? No, did you? Yeah, it's a Mercedes. If she was saved, she wouldn't be driving a Nazi car. What she did? Yeah, that woman. She's a, she's a Zionist and she's driving a Nazi car. Don't you know Hitler drove a Mercedes? Self righteous spirit. Self righteousness. Hallelujah. I had one lady leave my congregation back when we were on Carlisle. She stood at the door spreading real good news. The good news was the rabbi drives a Saturn after the deity Saturnalia. So, there's no way I'm going to this congregation anymore because the rabbi is worshiping, on, sun, on Saturday he worships Yahweh, but on Sunday he worships Saturnalia. Because if he didn't, he would sell that Saturn. Didn't you know Saturn is named after Saturnalia? Yeah. And then we get into people wanting me, how come we don't push, come out of her my people anymore? It was a good book when I first got into Torah. Now I realize it's got a lot of holes in it. People want to realize why you're not pushing that book anymore, come out of her my people. Because in that book it says you can't speak English. You can't. Because you can't say Gloria, because Gloria was the name of an ancient deity, Gloriamus. You can't say forgiveness, because forgiveness was an ancient Roman deity called Fargianta Cupianta. <laughs> So you can't say Susanna because there was an ancient, there was an ancient Ephesian deity called uh, Susiana Poschiana. Yes. So now wait a second, I can't say goodbye because I'm giving homage to the deity Kudbatko, 
I can't say hello because I'm giving the, I'm, I'm giving glory to the deity Kaliwanto, and I can't say I love you because I'm giving I'm giving I'm giving homage to the to the deity Lavusia. So if I can't say I love you because because no pagan words should come out of your mouth, there's a pagan connection. And in, in some of these books, they tell you every word, every English word has a pagan connection. Ooh. So if it has a pagan connection, and I can't say all these words, well, what do I do now? If I can't speak English, maybe I gotta start preaching in Hebrew. That's Hallelujah! Nice, but not all the people can understand Hebrew. Hallelujah! So that's what a self-righteous spirit is. So in that book, I don't buy into that book anymore because every word has a pagan connection. And so if all words are off limits, how can we communicate to each other? Uh, uh. Do you know that every English word has a pagan connection? Amen. Do you know every Spanish word has a pagan connection? Amen. Do you know every any anything that's not Hebrew has a pagan connection? You know? Hallelujah. So what am I supposed to do? Disappear from the world and stop speaking? <laughs> Sign language. <laughs> All right. So why? What's the real reason? Stay with me. We, we'll, we'll, we'll be done by seven. Why did Cain? <laughs> Why did Cain kill Abel? Because, because Yahweh accepted his sacrifice and rejected uh, Cain's sacrifice? Yes or no? The underlying reason was his works were evil. Meaning, Cain had too much time on his hands. He did not abide in Yahweh. Abel abided in Yahweh, received counsel from Yahweh, received direction from Yahweh. Cain had too much time on your hands. That's right. Idleness is the devil's workshop. Go ahead and take yourself out of the assembly. See what happens. Good luck. You're going to need it. And even though we don't believe in luck. Because Cain was not abiding in his love, he was ripe to kill his brother. Abel ab abided in Yahweh's love and had no time to eliminate his brother. Verse 13. Do not marvel, my Israelite brothers, if the Alam Hazeh hates you, the world. We know we've passed from death to Chayim because we have love for the Israelite brothers. Amen. He who does not love his brother stays in death. So somebody could say, I'm born again. I love Yahweh. But the, the word of Yahweh says, if we remain in him, we abide in his righteousness we will never hate our brother or kill our brother, either physically or with our tongue, with our mouth. The only way for me to stop tearing you down on a bad week and for you to stop tearing your brother and sister down is to stay in his love. There's no other way to do it. To keep receiving his love. To keep receiving his mercy. There's no other way to do it. How did Cain have the time on his hands to commit the first murder? He got more fixated with his brother's good works, which, which, which instead of being remaining in what? In Yahweh. How about all those people who gossip and complain and cause division? They got too much time on their hands. They're not abiding in Yahweh. We can conduct this ministry like I used to, and one week we expose the Yehovah Witnesses, the next week we, we preach against the Mormons, the next week we preach against... Um, you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes. The next week we preach against uh, Paul White. Now where's that going to get us? We already know the church is screwed up. We don't need weekly sermons about that. So we've got to rearrange and abide in Him. So if, I, if we abide in His love, then when we talk about Paula and we talk about people in the church, it'll only be to pray them into truth. Amen! So how did that murder happen? It didn't happen when Cain just started murdering. He did not abide in his love. If he would have stayed there, he wouldn't have gotten himself into that mess. Murder is a byproduct of hatred. And hatred is a byproduct of, 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 of being outside of his protective righteousness. Brothers, we know we pass from death to Chaim because we have a hava, love, for the Israelite brothers. He who does not love his brother stays in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. 
and you know that no murderer has eternal chayim abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his chayim for us. Verse 16. We also ought to lay down our chayim for our Israelite brother. So how do we stop the gossip and the slander? Do we call the people that, that, that he called? Do we get in touch with the same people that she called? No. We reach out to that brother or sister and say, get into him, stay in him, abide in him, and you will have a righteousness that is, that, that is not of yourself, and so that you will begin to see others as Yahweh sees them. That's how you stop the fighting. That they are holy and blameless in love. Yahweh saw us as holy and blameless in his love. Remember the difference between the New Covenant and the Torah. The Torah says, do, 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 and never arrive. The Renewed Covenant says, done, done, done. The only question is, will you get into it, or will you stay out of it? Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. The Torah is good to shower Yahweh with love and affection, to show him how much you love him, but it's worthless to, to procure or succor his righteousness. There is a righteousness that is not of yourself. It is a righteousness that got you saved, and it is a righteousness that will deliver you from every sin. What makes us think that his righteousness brought us into the kingdom, but now our righteousness is going to get us to stop sinning? No, no way. It's got to be his righteousness. And how do I get his righteousness? We've got to abide in him, remain in him. His seed remains in him. His seed remains in him. Verse 17. Is anyone enjoying? Amen. Wow. I just got to move on because I have too much to cover. But whoever has the world's necessities, verse 17, 1 John 3, 17, and sees his brother in need and shuts his leg from him, how does the Hava of Yahweh live in him? And I'm proud of us, of this ministry, because we do help our brothers who are in need. My little children, let, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in misvot, in, in deeds, and in truth. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. 1 Corinthians 3.8. Don't turn there. 1 Corinthians 3.8. Love never fails. Where is that? 1 Corinthians 3.8. Love never fails. Never fails what? Never fails to deliver. Hallelujah. That sin that you keep on doing, anger, unforgiveness, weird behavior. Unfaithfulness. Not being faithful, not sticking it out, not staying, moving around. That can end. It can end if you grab for a righteousness that got you saved, not a righteousness found in the Torah. Sorry. That's an illegal usage of the Torah. Did you get that? Love never fails. What about the sin? What about my struggle with alcoholism? Love never failed. What about my struggle with lust? Love never failed. What about my struggle with unforgiveness? Love never failed. What about my struggle with bitterness? Love never fails. What about my struggle about to keep living in the past. Love never fails. And where do you find love? Where there's no sin. Where is there no sin? Only one place. In Him. Abide in Him. Stay in Him. And now you're trying to use your own righteousness to walk in love. You can't use your own righteousness to walk in love. You've got to use and tap into what? His righteousness. Love never fails. Love will never fail to rid you of your bondages and your sins. A righteousness not of yourselves or of religion or of this world. Go with me to Romeo 10. Let me sit down for a second while we turn there. Oh, it feels good. Romeo 10. Is anyone enjoying? Amen. Ten one. Romans, Romia. I'm enjoying this. I'm giving you the solution to sin. 
Many of you are not gonna, either not going to do it or it's going to be too difficult and you're going to give up. Stay with me and I'll show you how to do it even, even deeper. Romeo 10.1 Israelite brothers, my latest desire and tefillah to Yahweh for Israel is that they may be saved, Jewish Israel. Paul said, my heart's desire and prayer is that Jewish Israel might be saved. For I bear them record, they have a zeal for Yahweh, but not according to da knowledge. They are ignorant of Yahweh's tzedakah, notice, they are ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. They have gone about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of Yahweh, for Moshiach is the goal of the Torah for an eternal tzaddik's righteous standing to everyone who believes. What's the problem with the Jews? What is the final solution to the Jewish question? Not killing and torturing and, 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 and murdering these precious people. The final solution is for them to remove a trust in their own righteousness and submit themselves to the righteousness of Yahweh in his son, Messiah Yeshua. They have a righteousness. That's what the Bible says in Romans 10. The Jewish people without Yeshua have a righteousness. But it is their own righteousness. Look at this. Because of their ignorance of Yahweh's righteousness, tzedakah, they have gone about to establish their own tzedakah, and boy, they made a mess of it. And they have not submitted to the tzedakah of Yahweh because Moshiach is the righteousness of the Torah that they're doing. The, the righteousness of Moshiach is the goal of the Torah they're doing because Moshiach has a righteousness for everyone who believes. But because they don't believe, they're stuck in their own righteousness. And Jews cannot be saved without the blood of Yeshua. Notwithstanding the tears and the heartbreak, and, and you don't understand how Jews cannot be saved, understand well. Nicodemus was Jewish, and Yeshua said to him, except a more man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah! So there is a righteousness in Judaism, but it is not the righteousness of Mashiach that he gives to everyone who believes. There is a righteousness in the Catholic Church, but it is not the righteousness that Yeshua gives. There is a righteousness in Buddhism or in Hinduism that through many births the cleansing of the soul and the reincarnation will bring you to a higher status until you achieve nirvana. Como Havana e también en ciudad de nirvana. Understand this, every religion has a righteousness or a form of righteousness. The only righteousness that can get you to stop lying and backbiting and cursing during the week and with a foul mouth, the only righteousness is the righteousness of Yeshua. And you abide in Him, get into Him, and when you get into Him, stay in Him. Stay in Him. Because you'll be busy soaking in his love and his righteousness. It's a full-time job. Sticking in him. It's a full-time job. If I have a full-time job, I have no part-time job. If you have a full-time job, you have no part-time job. If it's a full-time job for the child of Yahweh to abide in him, how much time do you have to work the phones, Daryl? How much time do you have to gossip and slander the rabbi and the elders and everybody in the congregation who's doing everything wrong? If you're abiding in him full-time, you have no part-time to do those deeds. Amen! Many Torah-keeping believers, and I have to cover, I'm almost done, I think. Many Torah-keeping believers have not submitted themselves to the righteousness that comes from Yeshua. They are left to struggle on their own with their own form of righteousness, which is really a form of falling short of unrighteousness. We are to rest in His righteousness and His love so we can love others the way we have been loved. That's the, whole, that's the solution to gossip, slander, and bearing false reports and false witness. Abide in His love, receive His love, and then love each other with the same love. 
Unconditional acceptance. Unconditional. And it's a challenge for all of us. All of us. If we abide in his righteousness, we can receive his love, like Abel, and treat our brother and treat our brother the right way and not the wrong way, not with hatred and murder in our heart. So all those people who are causing division and complaining and doing this, you know what I'm talking about. They may have a form of righteousness and they may be fooling you, but they're not abiding in His righteousness. Because if we are abiding in His righteousness, we will love others the way He loves us. Living in Him and in His righteousness and doing things in this world. Now here's the challenge. I'm going to go quickly. Here's the challenge. How do we abide in His righteousness while we are busy living in the world and doing things in the world at the same time? That's the million dollar question. Right? Busy, stress, job, financial pressure, medical conditions, relational problems. With all this pressure, with all this stress, how do we abide in His love? That's a good question, isn't it? How do we stay in Him? That's the most difficult thing. That's, that's, I've told you all the things that to stay in Him. The question is, how? With all the pressures in life, with all the stress, with all the problems we have, at home and abroad, in our lives, domestically, how, when we get home and we have yelling and arguing and fighting, how do we stay in His love even while we are in the world? You ready? Here's the punchline. When I deliver the punchline, I'm going to keep going, so don't rush me. If I see you doing this, you've lost your salvation. <laughs> Have you ever seen a jogger? You ever see someone jogging? Cute, huh? What do they do? Do they stop running to listen to the music, to listen to their iPod? They're always listening to their iPod. They're always listening to their music until they finish the race. They never stop and sit down and say, I've got to listen to music. When, I'm, when the song is finished, I'm going to get back up and run the race. They have trained themselves to jog in the world and to tune out every voice and abide only in the voice of the music. If they can do it in the, in the physical, we can do it in the spirit. That jogger is an amazing piece of handiwork. These guys, they run through traffic, you ever notice? There could be a shooting in front of 7-Eleven. They ain't stopping. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? And they don't hear the police sirens. They don't hear the, the guy in behind 7-Eleven. They don't hear the traffic. They don't hear the horns. They don't hear the rain. They're just listening to one voice. They're working their way through the world. They're working their way through physical obstacles, obstacles of this world. But they don't stop listening to that music until they finish their workout. You get my point? There should only be one station playing in your mind and in your heart while you're jogging Hallelujah. through this world. Amen. When he's finished his workout, he's run his way, his race well. But like the jogger, we cannot stop and analyze. The obstacle! Could you imagine if the jogger stopped every time he came to a sewer? 
or he came to a construction site in Florida, he'd be stopping every five minutes. <laughs> but that's exactly what we do. As soon as we hit an obstacle in, the, in our walk with Yeshua, we sit down, we stop running the race, we stop going forward, we tune into a different station, we listen to the voice of other people, instead of the Ruach abiding in him and staying in him, and we focus in on all the obstacles, which is what we are doing wrong, and what others are doing wrong, what we are doing wrong, and what others are doing wrong to us. We start putting different music in our ears. Notice! You've changed the music. Can you find enough faults about your mom and focus in on that for a week? Yes, you can. Can you find enough faults about your husband and your wife for two weeks? Yes, you can. But you'll never be like that jogger who jogs through the obstacles because they abide with that music and nothing gets in the way of listening to that music. You and I stop every time we have an obstacle and we start trying to pin blame and play the blame game for the obstacle. <laughs> He put the obstacle. She put the obstacle. I put the obstacle. Brothers and sisters, like the jogger, we must keep our eyes, our focus, our heart on the music of heaven, the music of Yeshua. And if we run in this world, if the jogger can do it, we can do it. They, they do not allow any voice to enter their ears and any obstacle to stop their workout. Have you ever seen these guys? Yeah. And yet, a little opposition. Oh, she didn't say Shabbat Shalom. I'm not coming back. <laughs> not coming back? She didn't say, that Rabbi hasn't said hello to me in four days. I'm not coming back. <laughs> I volunteered to sing in the choir, and they didn't let me sing, so they can, I'll just take my voice somewhere else. <laughs> it doesn't work that way every obstacle that gets in the way we blame ourselves or we blame somebody else if the jogger did what we do they would never work out they would never finish their exercise so that's how we walk in the world as he was in the world he walked in the world but he didn't let the world stop him. He didn't let the world trip him up or cause there to be an obstacle. He only had the sound of the Father's will in his heart and the Father's will in his ears. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. So in other words, it can be done. It's possible for it to be done. In other words, we go through life, we walk through life, we encounter obstacles, but instead of trying to blame him, taking the blame ourselves, finding fault with everybody else, finding fault with myself, finding fault with my husband, we abide in him, we stay in him, and in him there is no sin. In him, there is no condemnation. In him, there is no guilt. There's only one place where there's no sin, and that's in him. Baruch Hashem Yahweh! Tudah Rabbi Yahweh. Tudah Rabbi Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. We focus our eyes on him. We set our heart upon him. And then when we abide in him as a byproduct, what happens to sin? 